We were neutral at first, you know, the like 30s, and into the early 40s, like the 41. We actually started going to work December 8th, and we finished the year. Um, those were one thing about the Allies, but like, there was also like, a lot of people opposed that. It's like we were going over with isolationism. A lot of people didn't want to get into World War II, um, the fact that no one ever liked World War I. Uh, so, Roosevelt really didn't know what to do, so he passed the Landless Act that we've been talking about to kind of get around the Senate and kind of appease everyone to also try to help everybody. Okay. He wanted to like, not get into the war, he was trying to do everything that he could to take down Nazi Germany. Um, oh, here we go. Sorry. Alright, US and Japan have been sort of allies. If you remember, we have, uh, yeah, the Five Power Treaty, where we limit the tonnage of warships that we can make. And Japan also signed that. But Japan kind of broke that a little bit. They went over the tonnage by a lot. Their navy was probably twice the size of ours in the Pacific. And when they started to take that aggressively over to China and stuff, they started to stop trading with them because they would kind of run out of supplies and stuff. But when they took over China, it's kind of they get more supplies in that area. And Japan really feared us because of our superpower our status and our navy and stuff. So they decided to do a sneak attack on Pearl Harbor. When they did this, it was actually really cool. Because they left Japan like, weeks earlier, because it took a long time to travel places like that, and they didn't use radio communication at all for like two or three weeks. They used lights on ships to uh, force ships to communicate. Japan did crazy stuff for this. Like, they actually had like, submarines scooting around Hawaii like, a couple weeks advance, and they actually like, blew one up and found it later. And they also came with a crazy invention of a submarine aircraft carrier. Where it would surface and go right to that main hatch and get an airplane out and fly off the submarine. So it was another way to sneak in the Japan attack on us. But when they did this, they had spies in Hawaii. They had attacked on a Sunday, knowing that that was our weakest defense point for almost no different base. Uh, but what they did know on December 7th was that our whole carriers were our aircraft carriers. So everybody knew what that was, right? No. Our whole carrier fleet was going training exercises out in the middle of Korea. It was kind of between Hawaii and Guadalcanal. It's kind of like right in the middle of there. But everything else was there except for a few destroyed airstrips and stuff like that. And so when Japan attacked, they sank all our main battleships and stuff like that. But not our aircraft carriers. And that plays a vital role later on when it helps us win everything. And then you have the Axis Corner. After Japan attacked us, Germany said, we want you part of us. And Korea said, we want to join this agreement and they created the Three Power Axis. Nazi Germany was big threat to America because of the vast trade agreement with everybody. And if Britain fell, America would be next. So it's theoretical that Japan and Germany both go together. So they uh, threatened our speech, our freedom of worship, and freedom of war freedom of freedom. So it, it's, they're threatening our basic rights and everything. Um, the way that that actually happened to another fun fact about that was the 
where the Battleship Royal was lined up, it was near the front of it. And so when they started attacking, the um, Battleship captains actually did something really heroic. They started their engines and they took off immediately trying to get out of Pearl Harbor. That way the ships had a way to escape instead of having the battleship block everything in. So all the captains, well, I think all of them did die on that. All the captains were around cruising around their battleships because they tried to get out of there. They wanted the other people to survive and they knew they were going to be able to salvage the other people. Um, so what happened to the Pearl Harbor? I don't. I mean, it's. Because that's why I know. I think that's why it's really interesting. I know that. I know that we had early radar systems at that time. Up in. On the Pacific Island or something like that. It's the furthest one from the coast of Japan. And they actually picked up the aircraft that the carrier didn't see on the ground. They just picked up like a false reflection or something. It's fairly low to the ground. This kind of food under bus is the best stuff in the world. And then, um, was this, wasn't this kind of right around the time that they put in the Egyptian Navy guys? And they put all the aircraft systems in the Egyptian Navy? I mean, all that, that another time? That's another time war, but all the aircraft were at Naval Air Force. But there's an air force that's off the Pearl Harbor, it's a naval air force, and all the aircraft were there. And so when they did come in and bomb, they scraped the air, air force and they destroyed all the aircraft. Not really. They weren't really worried about that this time because you know, we weren't at war with them. I made that timeline for you guys just so you can kind of see everything that I'm talking to. So, just kind of skimming over this, like she said yesterday, you know, World War II started because German were the point, and they made rapid progress in point, and then within two weeks, they took over point, which is why was the fact that Germany was in Poland, why is that the problem? I mean, we kind of gave Hitler little bits and pieces, but Poland wasn't part of the national group of Germany. They sided more with Russia and other countries around Germany. Which means Germany was? Well, it was non aggression pact. Yeah, non aggression is not the same thing for not invading Soviet Union. The aggression uh, was from invading Soviet Union. Uh, it was the no. It was the agreement between um, when they gave yeah when they gave them the Rhine Line. So he violated the Munich Pact. Remember, because that was the whole tactic with Britain and France was to appease him and allow him to take the Finland and the Rhine Line and this part. France, uh, after World War II or World War I, France did, uh, prepared what's called the Maginot Line. The Maginot Line is just a big bunch of concrete bunkers and stuff that was meant to stop Germany from getting in. And they prepared this years before World War II happened. They figured that Germany would be coming against it again. It was a good idea. But they put in the easiest route of access, I guess you could say, and the obvious 
because they heard it, but they didn't go all the way across France. And then Gabriel and David kind of just went around this drum measurement line, kind of surprised all of France. And all the Allied powers of France, Britain, nobody was ready for this war. We were in a state of depression. We didn't have armies and everything. France's tanks at this time are still outclassed by Germany. They really never caught up throughout the war. They're still kind of stuck in the World War One area of tanks. So when they did try and put the resistance, it was crushed. So it's Four weeks is one point, which is how long it took to take over all of France. France was trying to shut down the Ukraine. Well, it was it was the place for the uh, Germany throughout the war, Germany focused on high tech, high power weapons. And their tanks were at the center point of this. They had very, very strong tanks, not to mention numerous amounts of different types of tanks. They were all very heavy and hard to kill. June 22nd, France surrenders to the Germans. So the stars working their way through um, April, they work their way through Denmark, Norway, Belgium, the um, UK Allies. And then, as soon as they take France, well, other other than Dunkirk, I think. Um, Dunkirk is, I guess you could call it a fort. It's a tiny little fort at best that the Allies were pushed back to. If Britain wanted to go and try and stop Germany, they would take over all of France. So they sent troops to try and help. And it was a big mistake because as soon as the Germans started pushing them back, they pushed into a little area. It was 20 miles back. And when they got here, they, they were going to get killed if they didn't get somewhere out. And so, um, and Churchill, I think he was in power at this time. Churchill was in power at this time, so he recruited everybody that he could fish and boats, like barges, everything. Any kind of boat that he could get his hands off, he sent over to Dunkirk to try and help get British and French troops out so they wouldn't get massacred. And while doing this, uh, he got, he got him Almost all of them were saved, but it was great success. It was totally put together. Well, I did this, the Royal Navy kind of came in on other French ports and blew up all the French ships. So that way, Germany could not take them and use them against them. It was necessary. Oh, as soon as uh, Hitler takes over all of Europe, he starts putting up big concrete uh, bunkers and stuff. Big walls and stuff, so they can put tanks in here. It's called fortification walls. It's pretend to be any kind of defense. And he builds on this until the end of the war. He does a lot of crap for this war. And then the battle for Britain begins, which is the day that the biggest air war war. Air war Germany, which is the most war one, is their big air force. They tried to bomb Britain's submissions, kind of bomb them out, and make it easier to overtake them. They couldn't just charge in there with the troops and drive them and dump them on the beaches, because Britain still had a sizable defense army, not to mention that they were people are very They love their country a lot, but they're like patriotic. They're like Americans. And so when they kind of called it Michael and David, they started bombing everybody. When Britain or when Britain can bomb the Germany's tanks, they actually built like big tomb or like guard, you know, like big fortresses around the tombs of the previous tanks and stuff, and all their golden birds. I saw a picture once of a guy that was average size, and there was sandbags piled up three or four times his height to cover a tomb that he had to pay for. Okay. Very 
training consider when their uh, Royal Air Force kind of took dominance of the air power, which is kind of surprising because the Royal Air Force was smaller compared to the Royal Air Force. But Hitler was also fighting, or soon he became fighting a bigger war on two sides. So he had to kind of take some of his powers and put it in favor of Russia. Now on to Japan and the Pacific. Japan had no trouble bulldozing their way through almost all of the islands. All the islands were almost uninhabited, and it was or not uninhabited, but uncivilized, I guess is not the way to put it. They had, did not have the technological skills to keep up with the modern country. So when they went through the Japan, they didn't have it. It was really bad. Uh, they made their way through almost everything. They got pretty deep into China. That's where my grandpa was. There is, I think where part of the American aid went is uh, the Lightning Tigers, or the Flying Tigers, no, 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 one of the two. Uh, it was kind of an air force China, called China, but it was based in India and China at the time. It was a small resistance group, I guess you could call it, and my grandpa was there when the battles were on it. I said earlier, America kind of stopped trading with Japan, just play their role, not let them take over islands as easy. Then Italy, their small contribution, kind of starts to take over Africa. Italy was not great with Africa. Italy's army was pretty strong. They were good. They conquered. But they kind of like France. Questions? Everybody doing ready? Today, Um, this, this, this is also one of my favorite videos to study because uh, it's this other Lynch drama, Erwin Romanoff. I can't think of his name. You end up thinking a lot of it, but he's considered one of the masters behind Germany's history because he was such a tactician that he could take the country's little part. He made advances like up to a couple hundred miles a day. Of course, the soldiers very hard. That's kind of also why Germany succeeded. Um, this is another big. <laughs> comes to dessert, he's the magician. <laughs> <laughs> Um, there are some pretty forces in Africa, and they're headed by uh, Major General uh, the General of the British Forces. I can't really name that one. You know who you're talking about, but I have no idea. It's like Jefferson Chase, the Treasure Brown. You know all about the dog. <laughs> <laughs> I know his name. It's something. Something. Yeah. 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 A pretty big journey, or uh, this is where Rommel comes in, and a pretty big head British general. I can't think of his name right now, but I'm sorry. Uh, they started butting heads, and this is where Rommel really shines because he's supposed to be a big British general, very good, and Rommel utterly destroyed him and pushed him back to the Pacific. Uh, Germany starts attacking Russia. A terrible decision for them, but in the beginning it started out great. They actually closed in within. Three to four hundred kilometers of Moscow, which is extremely close. They had huge advances. There were small pockets of resistance, but not much. And 
and then we're looking for December 7th, they go to the and this is where uh, Japan attacked Pearl Harbor. I think the attack lasted an hour or two. For the full month. But uh, Montgomery was the British general. He played a bigger role later on. The guy I wrote my article on for this one. Back on to the Pacific, um, Japan launches a surprise attack and launch, uh, sends most of our battle ships and all of them off dreadnoughts. And later that day, Roosevelt addresses the people of America following the rest of the day as well as the day. That's what it was told. <laughs> so that uh, declaration of war wasn't signed until so a day later. And as soon as this happened, it was like, it was R911, I guess you could say. As soon as this happened, massive amounts of people signed up immediately. And there was three or four hour days and stuff to, to sign up for the army. Just like 11, Germany and Italy declared war on the US. Germany declared war in the US. Yeah, they declared war. Which is all popular? It's a war. 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 He's another history buff, so yeah, Adrian just talked history all the time. Like, we actually got into, like, the, what would you call that in 2000? Like, what we talked about yesterday, I was like, the technical term for war, like, the exact definition of it. Or, no, it was history, yeah. yeah. We were talking about, like, the technical. Yeah. It was an hour long we talking about it. So, uh, uh, what, what would you call what we talked about yesterday at lunch? Like talking about experience? Yeah, like looking at the exact definition. Thank you. 